After Pilton Wheel, I'd like to discuss today on reaction turbine. As I have told, I'll discuss today on reaction turbine. The contents of the lecture are Francis turbine, blood efficiency of a Francis turbine, degree of reaction, net head across a reaction turbine with a dove tube, specific speed and the wheel geometry. And then I'll discuss on Kaplan turbine, blade design, and the free vortex flow concept. I'd like to initiate the discussion with a cut section of a Francis turbine. Please indicate that water is passes to the volute casing and that in enters the impeller via guide vein and then the water is pushed through the reservoir or the sump via the drop tube. Thereby, the volute casing, guide vein, impeller and the drop tube are the integral part of a Francis turbine. And Francis turbine is a reaction turbine. Thus, I like to indicate here the primary features of a reaction turbine. Those features are the part of the total head available is converted to the velocity head before the entry to the turbine and the remaining pressure drop occurs in the rotor. Hence, the static pressure of water gradually decreases as it flows through the runner. The flow completely fills all the passages in the runner, unlike to a Pelton wheel. Furthermore, the guide vanes are used to control or direct the flow. Further, a top tube is normally added to the turbine exit. This top tube is also considered as an integral part of the turbine. So these are the features of a reaction turbine. I would like to illustrate about the features of a Francis turbine. The Francis turbine is a mixed flow reaction turbine. Moreover, a reaction turbine is usually well suited for low heat and high flows. I have already indicated earlier, but further I like to add here that the static pressure of fluid gradually changes as it passes through the impeller, varying the cross-sectional flow area of the runner passage. An American engineer, James B. Francis, 1815 to 92. During this period, he developed a radial flow hydraulic turbine of reaction type, which is named after him as Francis turbine. Most of the Francis turbine have vertical shaft constructions, although. Some of smaller machines have horizontal shaft. The schematic of a Francis turbine is indicated in figure one in the next slides. Figure one illustrates a vertical shaft Francis turbine 
in different views and figures to illustrate the diff features. Suppose here I have given a schematic of the whole system to illustrate that the turbine is connected to the reservoir by a long pipeline which is called penstock. So thus penstocks push the water to the turbine and then the water is ejected after flowing through the volute casing and the turbine via up to the lower sump. And thus from this picture one can appreciate what is the head available at the NT to the turbine. Another picture I have indicated here which is a solute modeling and the cut section presenting the volute casing and the runner of a Francis turbine. One can appreciate here that water enters by volute casing and the area in the volute casing decreases and thereby it maintains constant speeds around the speeds of fluids around the impeller and here the fluid enter the impeller via guide vanes the position of the guide vanes can be altered also through a servo mechanism thus the guide vane control and the direct the flow at a proper angle at the NT to the runner and then water flowing through the runner it is pushed to the reservoir by a drop tube. Furthermore I have given here the two sectional view of a Francis turbine illustrating that the area of the volute casing is gradually being is being decreased so that at every section or at every guide veins the water enters with almost constant speeds for the more one can appreciate the impaler here. In another section, one can find the guide vein and the impaler. And here you can see that the direction of the flow within the impaler passage changes from radial to the axial direction. That's why impeller is a mixed flow impeller here and then it is pushed to the water is pushed to the lower reservoir via the drop tube. Thus in this figure the different schematics or the models have been presented to illustrate the overall features and constructions of a Francis turbine. I have presented here for your appreciation the picture of a real Francis turbine. This part, this section is the inlet and this is the exit of the impeller. And the impeller is of mixed flow type. Thus a Francis turbine comprises mainly of four components. One, the spiral volute casing, the second guide vanes, third the runner or the impeller, and the fourth is the drop tube. Let me discuss about the spiral casing. I have indicated here in brief about its feature. 
fluid enters the spiral casing that surrounds the impeller or the runner. This spiral casing is known as volute or scroll. The flow rate along the fluid path in the volute decreases due to continuous entry of fluid to the runner through the guide veins. Thus, the cross-sectional area of the volute decreases along the flow path so that the flow velocity remains almost constant. I have discussed now about guide vein. The essential purpose of the guide vein is to convert a part of the patient energy of fluid to the kinetic energy and then to direct the fluid onto the runner at the most appropriate angles. Moreover, the guide veins are provided to control the flow rate through the runner. Thus, they can be turned by a suitable governing mechanism regulating the flow rate when the load changes as indicated in figure 2. So in figure 2, I have illustrated the two positions of guide vein. One is drawn by firm line and other position is drawn by the dotted line. Please note that for the position which has been illustrated by dotted line, the flow area is much less and thus the flow rate. Hence, the flow rate can be controlled by turning the guide vein by a governing mechanism. Furthermore, guide vein impart a tangential component of velocity and hence an angular momentum to the water before it enters to the runner. Regarding the impeller or a runner about a Francis turbine, I like to state that the angular momentum of water is reduced as it passes through the runner and thereby supplying work to the turbine set. A combination of radial and tangential components of flow is observed in the runner of a Francis turbine. Here the flow is inward, that is, it flows from periphery towards the center. Further, please note that here, the direction of flow changes as it passes to the runner and finally it becomes axial entering to the drop tube. The shape of the runner depends on its specific speed. Thereby, while designing an impeller, one should assess what is the specific speed. The draft tube, as indicated here, is a conduit that connects the runner exit to the terminus, where water is being finally discharged. The primary function of the draft tube is to reduce the velocity of the discharge water at the outlet. Thus, the duct tube acts as a diffuser by ensuring maximum recovery of energy by significantly reducing the exit kinetic energy. Further, it permits the turbine to install above the tunnel without any significant drop of available end. Please note that this is important point that the top tube permits the turbine to be installed above the trail water 
without any significant drop of available head. This I will explain later. The exit of the drop tube must be submerged below the level of water in the tailless so that the turbine remains full of water. After the discussion of different components of a Francis turbine and about their feature, I like to discuss here the benefit of using a duct tube for a reaction turbine and the neat head available across a Francis turbine. Let me comment now about net heat across a reaction turbine with a drop tube. Figure 3 shows a flow diagram from a reservoir via a reaction turbine to the tail rest, as indicated here. And this schematic would give us the idea of heat across a reaction turbine. What I have illustrated here, I have indicated a paint stop which is connected to the turbine. And turbine in turn is connected to the top tube. Therefore, finally water is being discharged via the top tube that deduces the kind of energy of water from the outlet of the turbine. The stuff tube is a diffuser. Here I have indicated the features of a duct tube stating that the effective head across a turbine is the difference between the head at intake to the machines and the head at its outlet. So all can imagine now the effective head which will be here the head drop because of flow through the turbine. That is the difference between the head at the state point one minus head at the state point two. However, at the state point two, what is the kind of energy of the fluid that can be treated as a loss? Now, the sum part of this exhaust kind of energy can be recovered without the with the duct tube. Again, I like to say that the sum part of this exhaust kind of energy can be recovered with the drop tube. Thus, the effective head available can be substantially improved because of drop tube than without drop tube. Furthermore, one should note that the drop tube being a diffuser, the angle of divergence be limited to 8 degree to prevent the flow separation. Thus, while designing a dove tube, the angle of divergence should not cross 8 degree. Otherwise, its performance may deteriorate because of flow separation. Figure 3 here indicates the same flow diagram. And here one can appreciate that the turbine is installed above the tail rest by an amount Z. So Z is the elevation. And the inlet and exit to the turbine is indicated by the point 1 and 2. Thus, the total head at the entry and exit of the turbine can be found out by applying the Bernoulli equation as H1 is equal to P1 by rho g plus C1 squared by 2g plus z, which is the equation number 1. And similarly, H2 
is equal to P2 divided by rho g plus C2 square by 2g plus z. That is, the total head is equal to the pressure head plus velocity head plus z height. Now the overall head can be expressed as H0 equal to H1 plus HF. HF is the loss of head due to friction in the penstock. Please note that I have indicated here H1 and HF. So H1 and HF has been marked here along with C1 squared by 2G, which is the velocity head at entry. Now, the net head available to the runner is given by H1 minus H2, which is equal to H. That's equation number four. So I have defined here overall head. And also I have defined here the net head available to the runner. Figure 3 indicates that the state point 2 is the exit of the turbine and 3 represents the exit of the dark tube. Now, with the dark tube, one can say H2 is equal to HC plus H suffix FD, where small h suffix FD represents the frictional loss in the dark tube. Now, neglecting friction loss in the dark tube, we have H2 is equal to H3, which is the equation number five, where H3 is equal to C3 squared divided by 2G because at the state point C, the pressure is almost equal to the atmospheric pressure and Z being zero. Thus, H2 is equal to C3 squared divided by 2G. Hence, the net head available to the runner becomes H is equal to H1 minus H2, that is H1 minus C3 squared divided by 2G, which is given by the equation 6. Thus, please note that the available energy to the runner has increased because of addition of drop two. Thus, I have illustrated here the purpose of providing a drop tube. A drop tube allows the turbine to install above the tail rest without any drop of available head. The second point is the more available aid for energy conversion because of reduced exhaust kinetic energy, since now the drop tube can be considered as an integral part of the turbine, the third point, a vacuum pressure that is below the atmospheric pressure is maintained at the exit of the runner now because of addition of drop tube. Thus, there is a chance of cavitation, which will be discussed later. Now, at the exit of the impeller from equation 5, the static pressure can be expressed as P2 divided by rho g plus C2 squared by 2g plus z is equal to C3 squared divided by 2g. Thus, P2 by rho g is equal to minus within the bracket minus z plus C2 square minus C3 square divided by 2s g. Equation number 7. Hence, the static pressure at the exit of the impeller is below the atmospheric pressure. The minimum local pressure at the outlet should never fall below the vapor pressure of liquid 
at the operating temperature to avoid the problem of cavitation. This limits the size of the top tube. Now I'll derive the expression for blade efficiency and degree of reaction of a Francis turbine and correlate them with flow angles. The meridional view of a Francis turbine at a mid blade height along the inlet and exit velocity triangle have been presented here. I have illustrated earlier about the meridional streamline or meridional circumferential section. So you may imagine that I have considered a meridional circumferential section passing through the meat plane and let U1 be the inlet blade speed and W1 be the inlet relative velocity to the rotor and thus C1 be the absolute velocity at entry. Similarly, W2 be the relative velocity at exit from the blade and U2 be the blade speed at exit. Thus W2 plus U2 result in C2. Now here C2 in the radial direction. I have projected here the velocity triangle. I have taken a blade which is the meridional section of the blade and thus I have indicated here U1 plus W1 would be equal to C1 and beta 1 is the relative inlet angle alpha 1 be the absolute inlet angle so one can imagine here CM1 CM1 and C theta 1 CM1 be the meridional velocity at inlet and C theta 1 is the swelling component at inlet. Similarly, at exit W2 is the relative velocity plus U2 would be equal to C2. Now, alpha 2 is 90 degree here. Beta 2 is the relative exit angle and CM2 that is meridional exit velocity which is connected to the flow rate should be equal to C2 here. So this is the velocity triangle related to a Francis turbine runner. Please note the velocity triangle here at inlet so I have indicated C theta 1 which is swelling component and inlet and this is W theta 1 furthermore at exit here C theta 2 is equal to 0 and please note that the design is such that CM1 is equal to CM2 that is meridional velocity at inlet and exit they are made equal. Now from inlet velocity triangle one can write CM1 divided by C theta 1 is equal to tan alpha 1 and thus C theta 1 is equal to CM1 into cot alpha 1 which is the equation number 8. Similarly I can write CM1 divided by W theta 1 is equal to tan 
180 degree minus beta 1 thus w theta 1 is equal to cm1 into cot within back at 180 degree minus beta 1 further the blade of a francis turbine are always so safe that the tangential or the swelling component of velocity at exit becomes zero that is c theta 2 is equal to zero in that case c2 or alpha 2 would be equal to 90 degree on this mid the kinetic energy exit at a minimum level furthermore the flow velocity remains constant throughout the machine that is cm1 is equal to cm2 with respect to velocity triangle particularly at the exit there is an error regarding the direction of w2 so the direction of w2 would be like this okay now the energy transfer to the rotor per unit mass flow rate can be obtained from the all our equation for turbine as a small w is equal to u1 into c theta 1 since c theta 2 is equal to 0 here furthermore u1 can be given by c theta 1 minus w theta 1 if you note that this is c theta 1 and this length indicates w theta 1 so u1 would be equal to c theta 1 minus w theta 1 from inlet velocity triangle again u1 would be equal to put the value of c theta 1 as w theta 1 then u1 would be cm1 cot alpha 1 plus cm1 into cot within the back at 180 degree minus beta 1 thus it would be equal to cm1 into cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 thus from equation 10 which is the Euler equation for turbine w equal to u1 c theta 1 that is equal to cm1 square into cot alpha 1 within the back it cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 that is equation number 13. now the kinetic energy at outlet of the impeller can be treated as loss the kinetic energy at the exit is equal to c2 squared by 2 that must be equal to cm2 squared by 2. thus please note that exit velocity triangle and c2 would be equal to cm2 and that's also would be equal to cm1 hence the blade efficiency of a francis turbine can be expressed as eta b is equal to small w that is specific work output divided by small w plus cm2 squared by 2 that can be expressed as small w divided by small w plus cm1 squared by 2 since cm2 equal to cm1 now put the value of small w which I have derived earlier thus blade efficiency can be expressed as twice cm square cot alpha 1 within the back at cot 
prefer one plus cot beta well divided by cm one square plus twice cm one square into cot alpha one within the back at cot alpha one plus cot beta one which can be written as eta b is equal to 1 minus 1 whole divided by 1 plus 2 cot alpha 1 within the back at cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1. This is equation number 15. Thus, equation number 15 is an important equation which states the efficiency of a Francis tur turbine blade the degree of reaction of a Francis turbine. The change in pressure energy of fluid in the rotor can be evaluated by subtracting the change in its kinetic energy from the total energy released. Now, with respect to velocity triangle, Please note that C1 be the inlet absolute velocity to the runner and C2 be the exit absolute velocity. Now the hop into C1 square minus C2 square represents the change in kinetic energy as the fluid passes to the impale. Thereby, R is defined here as W minus half C1 square minus C2 square divided by W, where W represents the total energy released as the fluid passes to the turbine. Now from inlet velocity triangle, C1 equal to Cm1 divided by sine alpha 1. Now I can say C1 square minus C2 square is equal to Cm1 square within back at 1 divided by sine square alpha 1 minus 1. Since one should appreciate that C2 is equal to Cm2 and Cm2 equal to Cm1. Thus, I can say C2 is equal to Cm1. Thus, C1 square minus C2 square is represented as Cm1 square into cos square alpha 1. Now, from equation 60, the degree of reaction becomes R is equal to 1 minus half C M1 square into cot square alpha 1 divided by W. Thus R equal to 1 minus cot alpha 1 divided by 1 plus twice cot alpha 1 plus cot beta 1 that is equation number 17. Thus, equation number 17 is an important relation which gives the expression for degree of reaction. And please note that the degree of reaction of a rotor of Francis turbine depends flow angle alpha 1 and beta 1. Please note that the inlet blade angle beta 1 of a Francis turbine varies in the range 45 to 120 degree and the guide vein alpha 1 from 10 to 40 degree. The ratio of blade width to diameter W by D of a runner of Francis turbine at the inlet depends on the specific speed ns and w by d varies in the range of 1 by 20 to 2 by 3. So from this ex expression 
one can appreciate there is a wide variation of beta 1 and w by t. And this depends on specific speed. Therefore, the specific speed and wheel, wheel geometry, they must be correlated. And this correlation I'll express now. So I have written in brief that for a Francis turbine, the variation of geometric parameter like alpha 1, beta 1, w by d depend on the specific speed ns, where ns lies in the range 50 to 400. And the specific speed here is expressed as ns is equal to n root over p h to the power 5 by 4. 4. That is, this is the power specific speed, where n is expressed in RPM, p in kilowatt, and h in meter. If eta h be the hydraulic efficiency of a Francis turbine, while the power delivered is given by P and head available is H, then eta H can be expressed as P divided by rho Q G into H. And thus P can be expressed as eta H into rho Q G into H equation number 19. Thus putting the value of P in the expression of specific speed, one can so that ns is equal to within the back end 1 plus twice cot alpha within the back end cot alpha plus cot beta over to the power minus 3 by 4. So this is the expression for specific speed of a Francis turbine in terms of blade angle. So here Please note that equation 20 indicates that specific speed of a Francis turbine is function of blade angle. Characteristics of turbine operating at a part load. When a Francis turbine is required to operate at part load, the power output is reduced by tilting the guide vane to restrict the flow rate while the blade speed is maintained constant. At a part load, the relative velocity at the runner entry has a high incidence, while the absolute velocity has a large component of soil at the runner exit. Both these conditions lead to high losses, thereby at the part load losses would increase. Figure 5 shows the variation of hydraulic efficiency for different types of turbine including the Francis turbines over the entire range of load at constant speed and constant head. Figure 6 indicates the variation of hydraulic efficiency for various types of turbine over a range of loading at a constant speed and constant head. So efficiency versus load has been plotted here. And this indicates that the Francis turbine suffers most compared to other two at part load, while the Pelton hull gives the best performance indicating almost a flattened characteristics at part load. In this section, I'll discuss about a Kaplan turbine, which is an axial flow hydral turbine. I'll discuss about its feature construction, flow characteristics, and the blade design. I'll discuss now about the Kaplan turbine. 
The Kamlal turbine is a high-specific speed machine which corresponds to a relatively low head and high flow rate. Please note that for a given diameter of the runner, the maximum flow rate is achieved when the flow becomes parallel to the axis of rotations. Thus, for a Kaplan turbine, which is of axial flow constructions, gives the maximum possible flow rate for the given diameter. I have indicated here the picture of a real Kaplan turbine, where you can appreciate the turbine having fewer blades and the blades look like a propeller, very well machined, very well finished leather. And the blades are aerofoil constructions. Such a hydraulic turbine was first designed by an Australian engineer, Victor Kaplan, and therefore it is named after him as a Kaplan turbine. A schematic of the machines will be indicated in figure one. Please note that the function of the dive vane here is same as the function turbine. So I uh, I have not illustrate here further about the function of the dive vane. Figure one illustrates the schematic of a Kaplan turbine. This indicates the guide vane, impaler, the drop tube. And here the impaler are aerofoil shaped and highly twisted. Now between the guide vane and the impaler, the fluid in a Kaplan turbine turns to a right angle into the axial direction and then passes to the runner. Thus, the fluid enters the impaler axially and leaves axially. Furthermore, please note that the runner usually has four to six blades and closely resembles a ship's propeller. Thus, it is often referred as a propeller turbine. Neglecting the frictional effect, the flow approaching the runner can be considered as a free vortex. Thus, the wheel velocity is inversely proportional to the radius, while the blade velocity is directly proportional to the radius. Thus, I like to say here that C theta component at inlet would be inversely proportional to 1 by R and U blade speed would be proportional to R. The different relationship of the fluid velocity and the blade velocity with changes in radius would lead to a highly twisted blade for a Kaplan turbine. Figure 2 indicates the velocity diagram at the inlet to an exit from the runner of a Kaplan turbine at the mean radius that is R is equal to Rm. Thus, let us consider the mean section, which I have drawn by the reading, now this is a circumferential section. However, as I have indicated earlier, this is the runner of a Kaplan turbine. This is actually half, and the blades are mounted on the half, and the blades are aerofoil constructions.
and the section one indicates the inlet to the blade while section two indicates the exit from the blade now the circumferential section if i cut and stretch on a plane of paper i'll get the blade profile which are arrow foil section this is the blade profile and the velocity diagram has also illustrated here so u is the blade speed therefore at inlet u plus w1 would give c1 w1 be the relative inlet velocity and c1 is the absolute velocity where u is the blade speed similarly beta 1 be the inlet relative flow angle and alpha 1 be the absolute flow angle at inlet and here both beta 1 and alpha 1 are projected with respect to the peripheral direction and exit w2 be the relative velocity and c2 be the absolute velocity thus w2 plus u would lead to c2 here c2 would be equal to cz that is equal to axial direction of flow axial component of c that is cz and alpha 2 be the absolute angle and beta 2 be the relative flow angle at the exit here alpha 2 would be equal to 90 degree that means c2 will be in the axial direction here now i have already indicated that c theta at inlet is inversely proportional to the radius 1 by r while blade speed u is proportional to r considering that if i draw the velocity triangle at different section would realize that it lead to the twisted blade to make you understand what I have taken I have taken three section one is near to the hub one is the central line which is indicated by red and another I have, I have drawn by blue which is the a section near to the teeth. Let me project the blade profile on these three respective section. If I do that, and if I project on the on a plane, how they will look at that the, the mid section profile I have already indicated. Let me draw again with a red ink. This is the profile for the mid section. Let me draw a profile for the half. This is the profile for the half. Let me draw a profile for the section which is close to the tip this is the profile for a section which is close to the tip thus one can appreciate the blade is highly twisted so i am looking now all the section from here After this illustration, you have appreciated how the blades are in reality.
Thus here I have indicated the blade angle with respect to the tangential direction at a plane near the hub is greater value than that at a tip. Similarly, one can imagine stagger of the blade profile near the root would have a higher value than the tip. Furthermore, the high degree of twist of a couple on turbine can be related to the strength of circulation around the blade and that I'll explain you in the next slides. If the flow is assumed to be a free vortex just upstream of the runner then RC theta is equal to K, K being a constant thus it leads to C theta is equal to K by R which is the equation number one. Again, U is the blade speed is proportional to R, R being the radius, where Cz be the axial component of velocity to the imperial is considered constant for a given design. Now, I have indicated earlier the velocity triangle at the mean section. Now please note that at the inlet, this is C theta 1, that is component of C1 in the peripheral direction. Thereby, from inlet velocity triangle, one can write cot beta 1 is equal to u minus c theta 1 divided by cz and cot alpha 1 is equal to c theta 1 by cz. Now I can write cot beta 1 is equal to u by cz minus c theta 1 by cz that is equal to u by cz minus cot alpha 1. Thus, cot beta 1 can also be related to cot alpha 1. Furthermore, putting the, the distribution of C theta with R, I can say cot beta 1 is equal to omega R divided by Cz minus putting the value of C theta, I can write K divided by R into Cz. So this equation states that beta 1 is a function of R1. Similarly, cot beta 2 would be equal to omega R by Cz because from exit velocity triangle, it can be stated that cot beta 2 is equal to u by cz. That beta 2 also became a function of r. Furthermore, cot alpha 1 is nothing but k divided by r cz. So that cot alpha alpha 1 also is a function of r. So this is the relation tell us that beta 1, beta 2 and alpha 1 are the function of r. So the angles, flow angles changes at different radius resulting in the highly twisted blade.
the relations as established earlier that is cot beta 1 is function of r similarly cot alpha 1 and cot beta 2 they depict the following variation of flow angle with respect to peripheral direction for a coupler turbine as presented in figure 3. The figure 3 illustrates the variation of flow angle for a coupler turbine with radius to as R increases from half to T beta 1 decreases alpha 1 slowly increases and thus beta 2 also slowly decreases with r thus the stagger angle with respect to peripheral directions would vary from half to t while a section near the half has a higher stagger angle than the tip. Furthermore, the specific work output from the Euler equation for turbine can be stated as a small w is equal to u into c theta 1 as c theta 2 is equal to 0 for the couple of turbine. The figure here presents the variation of efficiency against the non-navisional specific speed for different kinds of hydraulic turbines. Here the maximum possible efficiency versus dimensionless specific speed has been presented. Please note that the choice of the turbine depends on the operating condition that is rotational speed, power and the head. It indicates that the Kaplan turbines operates in the high range of specific speed while the Francis turbines cover the range between the Pelton wheel and the Kaplan turbine and the Pelton wheel indeed operates in a very narrow band. Furthermore, if I say regarding the governing of a reaction turbine, it's usually controlled by altering the position of guide vanes and thus the guide vane also is controlled through a servo mechanism as before or similar to a Francis turbine. Thus, the flow rate is controlled by altering the position of guide vane at the part load. Here I have discussed about reaction turbine, both the Francis and Kaplan turbine about their features, efficiency, apart from constructions. Hope the lecture would be helpful to you. Thank you for listening.